Hey there you guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, my Living Stone collection. Uh, it's been a really long time since I've uh, done any videos on these little guys. Uh, you can't see them here, but I've got I've got the mixed planting that we did a little while ago. I think it uh, might have been two summers ago. Not this past summer, but the summer before. Let me give you a little close up here of that. Camera doesn't like to focus in on these guys. Let's go to the other side here. There's they're all over the place in there. I'll do some still photos at the end and you can see a little slideshow of, uh, of what they look like. Uh, stills seem to, to turn out better. And then also I have the bed of seedlings that we started, um, I don't know, it's, it's over a year now. They're, they're well over a year old. Uh, not quite two years old, but uh, they're looking really, really nice. Again, I'll do some still still shots of these because they're really getting some nice color in there, and uh, yeah, they're they're really looking good. There are mirror Im mirror images of the adult plants. Really cool. I like them a lot. And over the past, I don't know, the past couple of months, I've been uh, sitting on eBay and uh, buying some seeds. I've got so many seeds upstairs that I don't know what I'm going to do with them all, but. But uh, hopefully I'll plant them all. I've got uh, uh, some types of ficus seeds. I've got some uh, uh, passion flower seeds. Uh, my goodness, I can't even remember all the seeds I have. Uh, water lotus seeds. I've got water lotus seeds coming out of the wazoo. I got barely have enough space for one water lotus plant, but I think I, I bought 60 seeds. And those are those those really like to grow. Those are good growers. So we'll do a video on those. I also have some hosta seeds that I've uh, I've collected. I'm gonna do a video on hosta seed planting, and uh, yeah, I hope you stay tuned for all of that. There's a lot to come. Uh, it's coming to that season where seed starting is the the way to go. So anyway, I've got a, a collection of um, of living stone type plants. Some of them are lithops. Some of them are are cousins and and whatnot. So this one here is. Uh, Lapidaria margarite, but I don't know. There's uh, the label there that I created. And uh, we've got some uh, t uh, Titanopsis mix seeds. I don't know. You can't really see in there, but I mean, they're like dust down in there. Any of you that have tried growing uh, lithops and lithops variety. Of plants they have seeds that are so small and they they recommend that you space them out I don't know how you space them out <laughs> they, they all come out like don't breathe when you do it I've got lithops optica rubra uh, seeds here I'll probably have uh, photos that I get off of Google uh, of each variety underneath each each thing as I'm showing you that'll be the magic of the internet happening after this video. And then I have a Conophytum calculus. This one's a, a fun one. I bought this one actually uh, uh, a few months ago. This was one of the first ones I bought and these other three are I got as a... I think I was late night shopping on eBay and I'm like, ooh, this is nice. Ooh, this is nice. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll bring you in a little bit closer. Enough of me rambling. We're gonna plant these seeds and uh, yeah, again, stay tuned at the end of the video for uh, some some uh, stills of, of these other um, lithops that I'm growing. Uh, lithops right now, it's winter. Uh, soon, if you've treated them really, really well over the, over the summer, and they got enough light and enough moisture and all that stuff, um, very, very soon you'll notice that they'll start to produce flowers. So stay tuned for that. The winter time is when they grow and produce blooms. And uh, really... <laughs> During the summer, they don't do anything at all. So anyway, come on in closer. We'll uh, we'll get this done. Okay, so a little bit closer we are. Uh, I took the liberty of pre-mixing a, uh, a soil mix. I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, as we all know, or most of us know, uh, lithops like a really well-draining soil. If they stay too moist for too long, they will pop. They will uh, they will turn to mush overnight, and you'll wonder what happened. Chances are overwatering. So what I did. I took um, 
I did this in thirds. Uh, I had just a third of regular potting mix with the perlite in there. I have a third of horticultural sand. Um, it's kind of like a play sand. If, if you have nothing else, a clean play sand would probably work just fine. And I also had, really funny to me, it's like a crushed, a crushed clay. It was sold as a, um, uh, as a aquatic plant soil. And I don't understand why it was, was called an aquatic plant soil. Maybe because it doesn't float to the top. But I, I planted my water lotus seedlings in it once. And uh, the second I planted them in that, they just, they, they died. Uh, I think they lasted maybe a week after I planted them in it. Maybe it was transplant shock, maybe it was uh, something else, I'm not sure. So we've got this soil mix. Uh, one part potting soil, one part um, horticultural sand, and then one part of that uh, crushed um, brick. And uh, I've got some Ziploc bags here to act as greenhouses. I've got some small little pots. As you could see, there wasn't very much, uh, the seeds weren't very big, so I'll, I'll use small pots. I've got some paper towel that I'm going to line the bottom of each pot. As you know, that's how I keep everything in. And with such a, uh, with such a um, fine mix, without doing this, you'll have a lot, of, um, a lot of soil coming out the bottom of the pot, and you don't need that. So I'm just going to fill up each pot almost to the top. I'm going to leave about a half inch at the top of the, the pot. The only reason is, is I don't want it up to the sur soil surface because when I do end up watering them I don't want the seeds to blow away or wash away. Um, just going to set these little guys off to the side. You won't see them off camera but they're there. so hard to work with little pots, I'm so used to much bigger. And I have a tray of water sitting here. This is dry mixed I'm using and uh, the first watering I want to water from the bottom because if I if I water from the top it's going to uh, make the mix, the mix is very dry, it's going to make the mi 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 huh, can I talk? It's going to make the mix float. So if I water from the bottom slowly uh, it'll hydrate the mix and then when I'm done I'm going to spray the soil surface with uh, a misting bottle here. This is a fantastic mixing bottle. I recommend that everybody get one. I was going to do a review on it but then I got sidetracked and uh, shiny things occurred and uh, I just never got back to it but I really wanted to use it so uh, this is a water bottle that you can spray at all angles. It's really really cool. I recommend one of those types of water bottles for everybody. I find it so useful when I'm trying to, um, it's good to have some with insecticidal soap in it so you can get under the leaves and spray. As you know, when you get to the bottom of your uh, bottle, it gets almost impossible to spray, but you've got extra uh, extra stuff in the, in the bottle. This, this does it really, really well. No matter what angle you're spraying at or how much is in there, it still does a great job. Okay, so I've got the four little pots filled with um, filled with their mix. I'm going to bring them back into the the front here, so we can see them. What I'm going to do, I'm trying to grab the labels. Actually, let me pull all these behind here so that I can easily grab them. Okay, so this is the lepid, yeah, whatever. There's supposedly 30 seeds in this one, there's 10 seeds in this one, 15 seeds in that one, and don't know how many in that one. So, what I found when dealing with these little guys, it's best to cut the, the plastic thing right off because the zip thing doesn't allow the seeds to come through and they just get caught up in there then you can't get your seeds out so I'm just going to ever so carefully try not to breathe 
just going to tap the bottom of the bag and hopefully get the seeds to fall out not in one big clump tough too because these little seeds they like to stick to the plastic there's a lot of static electricity in there I think I've got them all from this one so immediately taking the label put it this way so you can see it immediately stick the label in the pot and I'll move that over into the water thing a little reservoir being ever so careful let it sit there and soak up for about 10 minutes oh, I keep trying to open the bag normally cut this uh, zippy part off You can try it the other way. I I just warn you that it does get a little frustrating. So we'll put these seeds in here. You can just fold the bag a little bit. And again, they're gonna, they're going to come out in a, in a clump. I don't know how the professionals do it and and uh get them spaced out. They recommend uh, making a little row in the soil and and uh, planting them a good distance apart, blah blah blah, all the things that you really should be uh, paying attention to. But <laughs> for us average people it makes it very very difficult. There's one last seed in there. You only order 20, one seed is a lot. Okay, we got everything there. So I'm going to pause this video. You don't need to watch me do everything. And uh, we'll come back when they're all done, okay? Okay, so everything is soaked for about... I soaked them for about 10 minutes. As I was doing the uh, the planting, I, I stuck them in and they, they absorbed and absorbed. You're dealing with the clay in here, so the clay will absorb some moisture. When these guys are babies... Um, Contrary to what I say when growing the adults, uh, the babies need plenty of moisture. Um, they like to be constantly moist. I will make sure each day that they're, they're damp. Not soaking wet, I don't want them swimming in water. But uh, each day, if, if they're a little bit dry, I'll, uh, I'll give them a mist with the mister. Uh, but I'm going to be keeping them in a Ziploc bag. Like so. After I put them in their little Ziploc bag home, I'll keep them in this until uh, the seedlings have uh, really started to uh, develop. And progressively, I'll open up the Ziploc bag to uh, bring in uh, or relieve some of the humidity in there. Um, spraying some uh, very, very carefully, not to disturb the soil. And offset the seeds. Spraying the surface of the soil. Zipping it up. I will put this in a well-lit, but not direct location. Well-lit, not direct location, and you want to keep it um, just average room temperature. A little bit warmer would be fantastic. If you have a warm room in your house, leave them in that. And uh, they should you should start noticing things start to sprout in about uh, 7 to 14 days is when you'll notice things start to sprout. And uh, it will take longer. It, will, it usually takes between, I don't know, uh, seven days and say three months for things to start to really grow. So stay tuned. I will keep you updated on these guys. These guys are so cute. Uh, probably in the spring we'll have a look at them and see how they're growing. Um, and now for the slideshow. Happy growing, everyone.